Hello. In this video, we are going to examine the three-dimensional structure of cyclohexane and substituted cyclohexanes. Cyclohexane is a saturated alkane with the chemical formula C6H12 and which consists of a hexagonal ring, so it is a cyclic alkane. Here is a model of cyclohexane showing hydrogen atoms as yellow spheres and the carbon atoms of the six-membered ring as the black spheres. We notice that three of the hydrogen atoms are pointing up. These are axial hydrogens. Behind our model, if we looked below here, we'd see one, two, three more hydrogens that are pointing directly down. Those are the other three axial hydrogens. Along the edge, we have six equatorial hydrogens. So we can divide the hydrogen in cyclohexane into axial and equatorial hydrogens. Here, we have removed the hydrogen atoms so we can more clearly see the structure of the six-membered ring. There are two important conformations for cyclohexane. To the left, we have the so-called chair form, which is the low energy form, and to the right, we have the high energy boat conformation. Here we have an edge view of the boat conformation, and we can see that the two carbons in the back and the two carbons in the front are in a single plane, and then the first and third carbons rise above the plane. Here is the chair conformation, again from the side, and we notice that we have one, two, three, four carbons all in the same plane, but we have the first carbon being above the plane and the third carbon being below the plane. Here is the structure of a 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane where we've removed the hydrogen atoms from the carbon 3 through 6. We have a chloro group and we have an iodo group. So this is 1-chloro, 2-iodo cyclohexane. Which conformation is it? Well, we notice that the chlorine and the iodine are both above the plane of the cyclohexane rings. Therefore, since they are on the same side of the cyclohexane ring, they are cis. This is the cis isomer. However, notice something else, that the chlorine atom is axial, whereas the iodo atom is equatorial. That will always be true when we have a cis 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane. This is the same compound, but flipped over, so that now we see the iodo is equatorial, and the chlorine is axial, we almost can't even see it because it is now pointing down. Again, this is the cis-1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane. When it is cis, we are going to have one substituent that is axial and one that is equatorial. And here is an edge view of exactly the same compound, the 1-chloro-2 iodo cyclohexane in the cis isomer. Here is the trans 1-chloro-2-iodo cyclohexane. Notice that in this particular isomer that the chlorine atom is equatorial and the iodo atom is also equatorial. So even though this is trans because the chlorine is below the plane of the cyclohexane and the iodine is the above the plane. That makes it trans. They are relatively close together and they are both in equatorial positions. And here is an edge view to hopefully show that relationship more clearly. We have the trans relationship between chlorine and iodine, even though they are both in equatorial positions.
This is also trans 1 chloro 2 iodo cyclohexane. But now we have the isomer where the chlorine atom is axial and the iodine, which is almost impossible to see here, is also axial. So this is also trans. So trans, we can have a situation where both of the one, two substituents are axial, or we can have where they are both equatorial. Here is our edge view for the trans 1-chloro 2-iodo cyclohexane with the substituents both in axial positions. Thus we have chlorine in an axial position and iodine in purple in an axial position. Here we have one of the isomers of a di-substituted cyclohexane with the irrelevant hydrogens omitted for clarity. Here we have the 1-chloro-3-iodo cyclohexane. Notice that both of the substituents are above the plane of the cyclohexane ring. Since they are on the same side, that means that they are cis. Notice that in this cis 1-chloro-3-iodo cyclohexane, both of the substituents are in axial positions, so we have that unfavorable 1-3 interaction. Here again, we have the 1-chloro-3-iodo cyclohexane. Again, notice that the substituents are both now below the plane of the cyclohexane ring. Since they are on the same side, they are cis. But notice now that each of these is in the equatorial position. We expect that on general principles that the bulky substituents will prefer the equatorial positions and this particular conformation of the cis 1-chloro-3-iodo cyclohexane will be expected to be lower in energy than the form where both of the substituents are in the axial positions. In this model, we see that the chloro substituent is above the plane, it's in an axial position, and the iodo substituent is below the plane in an equatorial position. Since they are on opposite sides of the cyclohexane ring, this is the trans isomer. And we see one version of the trans isomer where the chloro substituent is in an axial position and the iodo substituent is in an equatorial position. Notice here that the chloro substituent that was formerly here in an axial position is now here in the equatorial position. The iodo substituent that used to be here in the equatorial position is now in an axial position. Again, the iodo substituent is above the plane of the cyclohexane ring. The chloro substituent is below the plane of the cyclohexane ring. Since they are on opposite sides, they are trans. So this is another confirmation of trans 1-chloro-3-iodo cyclohexane. We return again to a monosubstituted cyclohexane, in this case, chlorocyclohexane. And we're looking at this compound from the point of view of E2 elimination. Recall that we need an, for each elimination, we need a good leaving group, and chloride is a good leaving group. And we also need beta hydrogens. So these will be hydrogens that are attached directly to the beta carbon. The alpha carbon here is the carbon to which the leaving group is attached. And then we have a beta carbon over here and a beta carbon over there because they're directly attached to the alpha carbon. And we see that we have one, two, three, four beta hydrogens that might be abstracted in an elimination reaction. But recall that E2 elimination is a concerted reaction and it has specific requirements on the relative positions of the leaving group and the beta hydrogen. Specifically, they need to be anti-periplanar. 
So let's look at this particular conformation of chlorocyclohexane to see if it satisfies the requirements of E2 elimination. For an anti-orientation, we need one of the beta hydrogens to be pointing in exactly the opposite direction of our chlorine atom. Since our chlorine atom is pointing in this direction, our beta hydrogen has to be pointing in this direction. And we notice that our four beta hydrogens, none of them is pointing in that particular orientation. Therefore, if we had this particular compound in this particular conformation, E2 elimination would be impossible because there is no beta hydrogen that is anti-periplanar to the leaving group of chlorine. Here again is chlorocyclohexane, but now with the chlorine substituent in an axial position instead of an equatorial position. To find a beta hydrogen that is anti-periplanar, since the chlorine is pointing up, we need to find beta hydrogens that are pointing down. And we see that we have one here and we have one there, which are symmetry equivalent. So in this particular conformation, there are beta hydrogens available for abstraction in an E2 reaction because they are anti-periplanar to the chlorine leaving group. This edge view makes it even clearer that relative to the chlorine leaving group that this particular hydrogen is anti-periplanar, it's pointing in the opposite direction, as well as this beta hydrogen. So this molecule would be suitable with the proper base for E2 elimination. Recall that in E2, which is a concerted reaction, that the leaving group leaves with its electrons. Here it goes chlorine. At the same time, the beta hydrogen down here is being abstracted by the base and its electrons go to form a carbon-carbon double bond in place of the carbon-carbon single bond, which was there already. The result is a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon on which the beta hydrogen had been attached. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.